Hey guys, Marika here, Mountain Public Library, back with you today for another classic and or award winner um, book recommendation. The first one that I'm going to start with is called Bud, Not Buddy, and this is by Christopher Paul Curtis. So up until four years ago, Buddy had lived with his um, mother, but then his mom got really sick and she ended up dying. So Buddy's left with very little. He has his raggedy suitcase that is um, held together with twine and a few, just a few possessions and his name. Now he takes all of these things with him from foster home and orphanage to foster home and orphanage um, for four years. So, um, one evening in the last foster home that he attends, um, he this incident happens and Bud is left pretty traumatized and he decides that enough is enough and he is going to find better. So Bud's mother never told him who his father was, but she left lots of clues. The only thing she did say was that he was a jazz singer, but she has all of these what Bud assumes are clues or had all of these clues. So he's pretty sure that his father is Herman E. Calloway, who is part of this um, jazz band. And he decides he is going to find him and um, introduce himself and that that is going to be his sort of like freedom so um, this is all happening at the, um, in the depression depression area era the depression era and bud is also just a 10 year old black boy so those are a lot of things um, that can lead to problems or issues in his travels. So they all do play a role. Um, so this all sounds like it is the the makings of this book um, to be like really bleak, um, but Bud is not bleak. Bud is hopeful and he is spunky and his voice brings so much life to this story and it's really one of those stories that you don't get a lot of because generally um, in that sort of setup that I just told you it's like they have to go through all these things and discover themselves but he seems to already have that in him which is pretty amazing for a 10 year old boy so even though some really terrible things have happened to him he tends to see the really amazing things that he is able to experience so this book is bud not buddy and it is by christopher paul curtis next book that i have for you is called when you reach me and it is by rebecca steed so Miranda is a pretty normal sixth grader um, her mother works a lot and um, they're not very well off they're kind of poor but they're really really happy um, so her mother works a lot so Miranda is left on her own for a good amount of the time so she starts getting these like weird letters that are telling her things that will happen in the future um, so this all builds, these letters build into this mystery of who and how true are these um, that Miranda must solve before it's maybe too late. Uh, this is one of those really amazing mysteries that you think that you have all of the pieces, um, but you just don't know how they all fit together uh, till the very end. So this is When You Reach Me and it is by Rebecca Steed. The next book that I have for you is called Brown Girl Dreaming and this is by Jacqueline Woodson. So this book is written in um, verse and it's done so quite beautifully. This is a story of Jacqueline Woodson herself growing up in South Carolina and I think Ohio and then eventually New York, um, all during the Jim Crow era and um, 
these stories are all told in this really beautiful verse creating this picturesque story. Each poem beautifully captures her emotions and feelings at the time. So it, they're taking us from place to place with the struggles and the racism and the cultural differences in each of those different areas in which she um, is living and telling the stories from during the 1960s. So it's really just an amazing, um, beautiful story about growing up as a black girl in this time, in these very different areas of the United States. So this is Brown Girl Dreaming and it is by Jacqueline Woodson. Next book that I have is a pretty well-known book um, and it is Little Women. Not a very little book, but about very little women. <laughs> um, Louisa May Alcott is the author. So Little Women follows the March sisters as they grow, or as most of them grow into um, women in a time when being a woman meant being a woman meant you had very little options. So the story is based off of Lu um, uh, Louisa May Alcott's own story of growing up and being a woman who turns to writing as a career when. Um, writing really wasn't something women did and women generally did not have careers. So um, this book is really weird because it doesn't really have mystery. It's not scary. There's not like a chilling aspect of it. There's not some great heroic mission. But what's so lovely about this book is what it does have is emotion and sisterhood and strength and fortitude, resilience and love. So this is honestly one of the greatest stories of all time and it is not just for little women, it is literally for all peoples and it speaks to all peoples in a way that most books do not. It's just absolutely, um, amazing and honestly the movies aren't too bad either but please read the book first so this is little women and it is by louisa may alcott the last book that i have for you in this section is just so happens to also be part of um, a series so if you do like this book go ahead read all of the other ones they are all amazing this book is The Penderwicks, and it is by Jane Birdsall. Um, okay, so right now I feel like we need, or at least I need, summer. I need the feeling of summer. I need that imagery. I need something because this winter was cold and we're stuck inside, and I just want the image of a beautiful summer that's carefree and everyone is just running around doing amazing summer things and this book is the perfect way to feel all of that so the Penderwicks girls and their dad and their dog um, are staying at this cottage that's part of this Arundel Estates um, for three weeks but um, when they get there the it's way different than what they had thought. They had kind of thought it was going to be this shabby little thing, but it is amazing um, and way bigger and more beautiful than they could have ever dreamed. And they're really excited until they meet the woman who's in charge of the place, Miss Tifton. And Miss Tifton is not nice. She's rude. She's mean. Um, she's really just a terrible person. So they're pretty sure that they there's no way they're going to ever be able to have any fun this summer with someone like Miss Tifton watching over them. But with the help of Miss Tifton's son and um, some rabbits and three weeks of summer vacation, um, the adventures will come and they will be amazing and this will most certainly be a summer that the Penderwicks soon don't forget. 
Um, and we, as the readers, get to feel all warm and summery. And again, at least I really need that right now. So this is The Penderwicks, and it is by Janae Birdsall. So there is another week of classics and um, award winners. I will be back next week with the last week of those and then we will move on to something that I'm not quite sure of yet, but it will be awesome um, that I can be positive of. So you all have a nice day. Bye.